Hey guys, I usually don't post this frequently, but the Lord's given me stuff to share, so I'm just gonna do it <clears throat> whenever whenever it comes, as frequently as it comes. Um, so I'm gonna pray really quick and then I'll get started. Uh, Lord, thank you for speaking to us, Lord. Um, thank you for allowing us to hear your voice and to hear what your spirit is speaking to your church, God. I just pray that this word would go out and touch the lives of um, whoever would listen and give them ears to hear and eyes to see what your spirit is speaking, Lord, and showing each one of us individually how to apply your word and how to apply your messages to our daily lives, Lord, to bring glory to you, Lord, and to bring more people into your kingdom. Remind us that these days are short, God, that we would not grow weary um, of doing what is right in your eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, okay, so this, the reason posting um, so quickly, I think yesterday, I just posted, was yesterday the day before that? Anyway, so it was really cool. The Lord had given me a word and the title of the video is on, here on my channel and it's um, at times salt does sting or something like that. And it was really cool. The Lord gave me that word um, and then um, I was, yeah, just, you know, gathering my thoughts. Usually when I get a word, I just want to make sure that it's one to share because he doesn't have me share everything he gives me, obviously. Um, and so just going over, making sure I was supposed to share it and um, gathering everything together that he wanted me to, you know, put in there. And then um, as I was doing that, um, there was another person on YouTube that I, and I spoke about this in my last video. I think her channel is called a fresh word. Um, but the Lord has been using her a lot in this season, bringing these short prophetic words that have really been for me and my family and stuff. And so, um, anyways, I, um, uh, I hopped over to her channel and I saw a word that had popped up and I don't even watch all of them, just the ones like the Lord usually tends to send the ones that he wants me to hear. Um, sorry, pop up. But um, sometimes, it, you know, if it's not something that really rings in my spirit, then I won't even click on it and watch it. And so um, just to kind of give you an example of how that works, because you could really get swept away. There's a lot of prophetic words on YouTube and every prophetic word doesn't apply to every single person either. So you really need to be in tune with God's spirit for him to tell you which prophetic words are for you, which are not, that sort of thing. Anyway, so he's really been speaking to us through her. And um, so when I clicked on her video, I was like, whoa, because her message, like I said in my last video, our messages were kind of intertwined like this. They weren't exact, but they were both speaking of like being bold and salt. I don't think she used that particular word, but the message really, they fit in really well together. And it was within hours of each other. When I got my message versus when her, hers popped up on my channel, but I could see when I watched it, it was within like, you know, a certain specific time. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. You know, and that's happened at other times. And I actually haven't felt led to share that before. But this time I felt like the Lord was prompting me like to share this. He's doing something like, okay, cool. So I actually, if you want to watch that video, if you haven't, the link is in the description box as well. So you can listen to mine, but you could also click on the link and go listen to hers. So this happened again let's see was this this was yesterday so at church yesterday i'm taking notes from the sermon and stuff and um right in the middle of the sermon the lord just gave me a prophetic word that was for sharing i just knew that it wasn't just for me so i wrote down all the notes um and then i was just like okay how should i share this lord like um do i share it to my church specifically do i share it on my channel what do i do and um so um I felt in my spirit that he was telling me it was just for the the church at large. It was every believer. And then, um, so I was at home doing stuff and then I clicked on the uh, Fresh Word channel and she had a, <laughs> a fresh word. And um, when I clicked on it, I was like, oh my gosh, because um, what the word, the both the word that the Lord gave me earlier in that day, again, went like this with her word that the Lord gave her. You know, and hers this time, it was just, you know, a couple hours more as well. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And I'm sure it's happening to like, like I said, hundreds of thousands of other people because the spirit of God, he wants us, these words to get out. So he's speaking them to lots of people, but it's so cool to see it. And then for him to say, you know, go share this again. So he's doing some really cool things right now. So get in his word, get close to him and, um, and, and you'll be hearing these things too that he's speaking, but also he speaks through other people. So it's good to, and it's always good to bring those words to the Lord and, and pray, Lord, is this from you? And make sure um, that you're not just listening to anything that comes your way that might not even be from the spirit of God. Okay, so the word was, um, don't compare yourself with others. 
And that's what her word was about, talking about not comparing yourself with others. But it was in a different context. So, so interesting. But the context that the Lord gave this to me was not to compare yourself with others in the area of sin. So I'm going to read through some of my notes um, that he put in my spirit. And I just jotted them down. Um, we are also different and unique. And that applies here in the area of sin as well. Don't take someone else's word for what is or is not sinful. The Bible tells us what sin, what is sin. The Bible is your guide. Just because it's not sin for one person doesn't mean it's not sin for you. And so don't get confused. It's not, it, I'm, he wasn't saying like um, that, well, <laughs> he wasn't, you know, like in the Bible, the Bible gives us a clear understanding of what is sin, you know, it's lined out. And so we know what things that as believers, we are not to be involved in. Um, however, within that, there are differences for what is sin for one person versus what is sin for another. And I'll give some examples of that. Um, but the Bible verses that he brought to mind were Romans 14, 14. Um, I know and am perfectly sure on the authority of the Lord Jesus that no food in and of itself is wrong to eat. But if someone believes it is wrong, then for that person, it is wrong. And then Romans 14, 23 says, if you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. So, um, I, I actually shared this word with the church, um, and I had to try and keep the video concise, um, to not go over, but since this is my own channel and, um, I have more time, I'm going to, if, if this video is not too long at the end, I'm actually going to share an example of that from my own life. Um, so just to kind of put that in perspective for you. So, um, some of the examples that the Lord put on my heart that came to, um, me readily were like gluttony. So, um, Gluttony is a sin for everybody, right? So none of us are supposed to partake in gluttony. Well, and I'm going to use an example about overeating. However, that's not the only way that gluttony can be expressed in our lives. Gluttony can take place in a lot of different ways, but I'm using overeating here. Um, so if somebody struggles with overeating and gluttony, um, and that is an area of weakness for them where they're um, easily tempted to sin, well, for that person, um, you know, it wouldn't be wise to be going to a buffet because that's encouraging them to overeat, right? So for that person, also, if the Lord has put that conviction in their heart, you know what? Don't go to buffets anymore. And to them, it feel that would feel sinful. We'll say a friend invites them out to eat and the friend wants to go to a buffet. And the person's like, oh, you know, I can't really go. Um, I'm not going to go. It's, you know, and maybe they question like, why not? Well, it feels sinful to me. Well, the friend who does not struggle with gluttony could offer them encouragement that could sound something like, Hey, it's okay. Like God gave us food as a gift. He gave us taste buds to enjoy the taste of food. Like there's nothing wrong with eating food and going to a buffet where there's a lot of different varieties. So where the person could get into a trap, the person who struggles with gluttony by comparing themselves with that person, with their sin issue with that person and saying, Oh, you know what? That person's right. Actually, it's not as sinful to eat. It's not sinful to eat. If it was, why would God give us all these things? You know what I mean? And head down to the buffet and pretty soon that person is being gluttonous and overeating and they've walked right into a sin trap. So in that, that a buffet for this person, not sinful, a buffet for this person, sinful. Does that make sense? It's what's going on in our heart. Um, so the other example is wine. So the Bible tells all of us not to engage in drunkenness. Well, half a cup of wine, maybe some people it might, I don't know. I don't even know if it's possible to make, get someone drunk. Maybe like a, a, a really small person. I don't know. So, but for alcohol, so I'm going to just use half a glass of wine because that's not a lot of alcohol. So this person over here, they don't struggle with drunkenness. Um, half a glass of wine, not sinful. This person over here, they struggle with drunkenness and in their heart, they know and feel that it's wrong for them to even have half a glass of wine. However, they're, they go ahead and have half a glass of wine. So even though maybe it's not making them drunk, if they've had that conviction from God not to put wine in their body, well, they've just sinned. So these two people have just done the exact same thing for one person. It's not sinful for the other person. It's sinful. Um, let's see. So the other thing is, um, oh yeah. So, okay. Those are the, those are the two examples for that part. So does that make sense? Um, 
All right. So then this other part of the word says, the Lord says, um, okay. We all have different areas of temptation, different weak points regarding sin. Depending on your weak points or areas of sin and temptation that you are prone to, we need to avoid certain activities and going to certain places that others may not need to avoid. We all have different areas of susceptibility. So um, actually, as I was recopying my notes down, the Lord gave me this picture. Um, as I was writing down that part, um, I saw a picture of a guy and he was in a body of water and I could just like from here down, he was, well, maybe here down, he was in the water and he was being sucked under. He was drowning and his arms were up waving and he was flailing, but he kept just going down. And then, um, right after that, the Lord said to me, if you're if you struggle with swimming, if you're not strong in that area and swimming is a weak point for you. You don't go and jump into a lake. You know you'll drown. Apply this concept to your areas of sin. Don't put yourself in the position to go into a situation where you are going to drown. Um, so then um, he brought to mind Matthew 5.29. Um, and I'm just going to read the whole, the whole verse here. Matthew 5.29. So if your eye even if it is your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even if it is your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. So, you know, sin is not an issue that we mess around with. Um, and I know there's a lot of Christians that walk around and like, well, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I can do whatever I want. And they take that as a license to live in sin. God doesn't take that lightly. And if you're walking around living as a, a saved believer, still living in sin like that and taking advantage, then I'm not really sure that you actually know and love God. And there are, I've talked about it in other videos, um, verses to support that, um, to check yourself and make sure that you are in the faith. And, you know, you can also study the word about that, where it talks about checking yourself to see if you are in the faith, because some people they're living their whole life and they think they are in the faith, but there is not the fruit to show it. And when they end up on the other side of this life and they want to go, you know, try and go be with the Lord, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And you don't want to hear those words. So if you're listening to this and being like, well, you know, I'm, free in the blood of Christ, I can do whatever I want. Well, um, I would re-examine that belief and take it to the Lord and search, search and see what the Bible says about that. Um, okay. So do to do, that was a little rabbit trail that I didn't have in my notes. Let's see. Oh, okay. So I saw the picture. Okay. You're going to drown. Okay. Oh, so he doesn't take sin lightly and neither should we be living in a bondage um, of sin once we've come to the Lord. And so he was saying, um, sorry, other page notes, not ta or taking extreme measures, not taking sin lightly. And so um, a couple of those ideas were, um, I already talked about like gluttony in, by way of overeating, drunkenness. Two other examples that came to mind were like lust. If lust is your... Um, Point where you struggle where you're susceptible well that means you need to take extreme measures bring it to the lord of course don't just take my word for it but bring it to the lord um movies other entertainment that you that you view um actually all of us should be putting these things in place not just people who struggle with lust we shouldn't just be um letting anything come into our eyes and our soul so all of us should have boundaries here but these people um, in each of these different categories, depending on what our susceptibility is, we need to take extra and um, extreme measures in these areas, if that makes sense. So like lust, so take you need to take extra care and set extra boundaries for movies, entertainment, places that you go, like the beach comes to mind, you know, um, an extreme measure would like, you know, it's the beach is beautiful. We love to go to the beach. However, if this is a struggle point for you, then put some extreme boundaries into place. One would be you just don't go to the beach anymore. Or it would be, you know, go to the beach. Don't go to the beach on the sunniest day when there's going to be the most people. Try and find like maybe go um, 
on, t on you know in the middle of the week or only in the winter time so you can still enjoy it maybe you can't jump in the ocean and swim but if your heart is protected and you're not falling into lust um then that is worth it or you know um you go in an, in the evening hour when there's not going to be as many people when it's not as hot so people will have more clothing on extreme measures that, that they'll seem extreme to other people they might seem weird you know some people might not you know you might have to start saying no to social invitations but if you're doing that to protect your heart and to protect your eyes and your mind and be in right relationship with the Lord, then you're, you know, it might be hard at first because you're kind of shifting your lifestyle, but it's worth it. And the Lord will bless you and just, um, pour out his grace upon you. And, um, you'll have like a shift to where you don't even miss that anymore because what has come from abstaining from sin is so much better than what would ever come from, um, a day at the beach swimming in the ocean, if that makes sense. So, um, and then the other thing that came to mind was phones, um, sexual immorality that, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sexual immorality. Um, the example that came was, you know, um, maybe you need, maybe you need to put in an extreme measure, like you're not going to give a hug to the opposite sex anymore. Um, you know, um, I guess the point is like finding your trigger points and finding ways to just cut those off, you know, not actually cutting off your hand, but you're cutting off those triggers in your life. Um, so maybe, yeah, not even hugging them, learning how to turn the right way so that you can, um, you know, um, only do a side hug, or if you're going to do no hug, then learning how to step back and offer your hand instead, that sort of thing. Um, and then the other one was with the phone. So if the phone is something that is a weak point, that is that you're, you know, finding yourself consistently stepping into sin on your phone, then maybe you need to get an accountability program where, um, you know, there's one, I forget what it's called, but it like you can you ask a friend like, hey, I'm having a really struggle here. Will you be my accountability partner? And you set it up so that if you go to anything on your phone that you shouldn't, they're going to get an email and they can call you and say, hey, you know what I mean? It's um, kind of like makes me think of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, just putting in something to help yourself and um, to help yourself to not jump into that lake, you know, where you can't you're not a strong swimmer. Um, and then the other thing too, or maybe nighttime is a time when you step into sin on your phone, then maybe you need to think, okay, at 7 p.m. at night or 8 p.m. at night, I'm going to ask my roommate, hey, can I give you my phone in the evenings because I'm having a hard time keeping it with me at night? So you hand it over to a roommate, you know what I mean? Or um, plug it in in someone else's room so it can charge there at night and you get a regular alarm clock and don't make an excuse like, oh, I need to use my alarm on my phone because that's that's going to give you a little loophole where you're going to step right back into that. So get a regular alarm that plugs into the wall, put your phone elsewhere. If you don't have a roommate and you live alone, find a place in your house, just praying for the Lord's strength and go put your phone in that place at nighttime, every night and get into that habit, you know, um, extreme measures. What are those? And if you don't, if you can't think in your own creativity, ask somebody that you trust to help you come up with some ideas, whatever your struggle issue is. Um, and pray about it. The Lord will, you know, just like, Lord, I need some ideas. How do I do this? He'll bring you ideas. Um, all right. So then the last part of this word, um, the Lord gave me was, um, well, I added this sentence of my own thought along with this word, this first sentence. Many of us, I think are aware of our own stumbling blocks, but then what the Lord was showing me was, but some may not yet be aware. Is there an area or maybe multiple areas of your life where you keep getting into a mess? There may be a weak point in you that you're not quite aware of how much um, damage it's causing to you and others. Ask the Lord to reveal to you your weak points that you're unaware of and he will. And to some people that might sound like, how do you not know your weak points? Well, some of us um, are not as in tune with what's going on inside of us than others. And that's okay. That just goes along with us each being unique and being different and, um, being on, you know, different pathways, all of us to the same end of serving God and pleasing God and, um, you know, being face to face with the Lord, um, and bringing others into the kingdom, but we all have a different journey getting there. So, um, I just want to make sure I covered everything that the Lord gave me. Um, yeah, I did. So not comparing yourself with others and, um, using the Bible and the conviction of the Holy Spirit to guide your choices and not looking at someone and saying, well, it's okay for them to do it, so it must be okay for me. Don't compare yourself in that way because that is a trap. Okay, thanks for tuning in. I hope this 
encourages you and blesses you. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, oops. <laughs> um, I forgot to say, I am going to um, include the link in the description box. If you don't know what that is, when you're watching my video, on the bottom right-hand side, there's a little upside down V, like a point. If you click on that, it'll drop down a box and I often will put stuff in there. And so what will be in there is the link to the video of her word that is intertwined with this message. If you want to see the different things that the Lord is speaking on this same topic of not comparing yourself. Okay, thanks.